Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Sometimes fact-checking should be easy, but this week ABC showed us how to make it look hard. Republican Duncan Hunter went on TV to claim that ISIS fighters had crossed the border into Texas. That bombshell had been kept out of the papers because there's no evidence for it. The website PolitiFact gave him a pants-on-fire rating. But then it was tackled by ABC This Week. Anchor Martha Raddatz played a clip of Hunter, then a clip from a government official saying there's no such evidence. Then back to the politician. Hunter insists he's right. His spokesman firing back, it makes sense that the left hand of the DHS doesn't know what the right hand is doing. It's been that way for a long time. Did Congressman Hunter go too far with his new claim? So who's going to settle this one? ABC brought in former Bush administration flack Matthew Dowd. Many times fear doesn't have to be real to be powerful. And in the context of it, our, we don't often have to have facts to back up our fears. We respond to our fears. I think everybody has the right to say what they want to say, but they have the right responsibility to say what maybe they believe to be factually correct. The congressman says he believes it to be factually correct. But at a time like this with terrorism and, as you say, with the Ebola thing, we should counsel our fears and look for the fact sets. Did that clear things up for you? Sometimes sorting facts can be tricky, but this was an easy one, and ABC's fact check was a fail. Campaign journalism is often pretty shallow, and NBC's Chuck Todd gave us a case in point. In the Senate race in Kentucky, Democratic candidate Allison Lundergan Grimes has surprised many by running only a few points behind the heavily favored Republican incumbent Mitch McConnell. But then came her big problem. She was interviewed by a Louisville newspaper and asked if she voted for Barack Obama. She refused to give a direct yes or no answer. It was an awkward moment, but not really so surprising since Obama's very unpopular in her state. The next day, the pundits on MSNBC's Morning Joe were beside themselves. Grimes had made a gaffe they deemed cringeworthy and awful. Chuck Todd took it even further. Is she ever going to answer a tough question on anything? You want to be a U.S. senator? It's if you can't say, if you can't find a way to stand behind your party's president, you can disagree with them, but you can't answer that basic question and come across looking that ridiculous. Yeah. I, mean, I think she disqualified herself. Think about and I really do. Point. Grimes didn't call for an illegal war or deny climate change. She messed up a bit of political theater. And for Todd, that should take her out of contention. Finally, media celebrated Pakistani activist Malala Yousafzai's winning the Nobel Peace Prize, but many carefully sidestepped some of the reasons for it. After Yousafzai met with Barack Obama last year, CBS Morning News was one of the few outlets to report on comments she made about drones. They replayed an excerpt of an interview with Nora O'Donnell on October 10th. Is it true that when you spoke with President Obama that you talked about your concern that drone attacks are fueling terrorism? The first thing is that it is true that when there's a drone attack, those, uh, the, the, the terrorists are killed. It's true. But 505,000 more people rises against it and more terrorism occurs and more, more bomb blasts occur. So for that reason, I think the best way to fight against terrorism is to do it through peaceful way, not through war, because I believe that a war can never be ended by a war. And you said that to President Obama? Yes, of course. You can see why such comments would be newsworthy. And if you watch corporate media closely enough, you can understand why they wouldn't be widely reported. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.